Hello again, this is part 7 of the Animatronic Rod Puppet Project and uh, things are looking promising. It's definitely a few steps to go, we've got most of the mechanisms and the construction made up now. Obviously I've still got to add a silicone skin, create a fur pattern and add the finishing details. But the body construction that I showed you in part 4 has come a, a pretty decent way now to where I can start to get a feel for the character and his range of movement and uh, his personality so to speak. I think he looks like something that's rummaging on the ground looking for stuff, sifting through trash maybe, a little trash monster. So here's my very hack mechanism from part four that I showed you. It's, uh, you know, essentially construct uh, rubber hoses, some aluminium rods, some U-joints, toilet hose extender, coffee lid. It's just essentially something to give a range of movement. And this is where we're kind of at the minute. And uh, in this video, I'm going to show you sort of how I got from that stage to this stage. It's been a while and there's quite a few steps that went into it. Um, so originally, I, I, you know, in my first ever video, I showed you this mechanism I started with. It's a design of a gimbal mechanism to control a set of radio-controlled eyes. A couple of servos pushing those bars back and forth there. Print that out, made a little prototype just to see if it would work. Um, I said that was a good few months ago now. It worked not too bad, so I printed out the Big Brother version. and testing some of the tolerances and movements, but uh, it's pretty good, reasonably happy with that movement. So to construct this thing, I did say I'd film it and show you how I put it together. So these are little D-blocks, and I put a bit of brass rod down there. A little standoff and a hex nut in the bottom and they make some pretty sturdy arms obviously there'll be a bit of weight there's gonna be a silicone skin it's gonna go onto those eyelids so they need to withstand a bit of stress you get a couple of those either side and there's gonna be a, an m2 screw that'll go through there anyway so these little clevis uh, parts little rc parts you can get this is what's going to um be the axis for the eye rotation up down left and right and here's the swash plate the gimbal mechanism I designed in Fusion just gonna open those holes up a little bit because they're gonna have pivot points and this is like a little tack nail that I'm using as like a little pin cut the end off here and, and they essentially go into those wee holes and they'll pivot around uh, the center axis and same for the top I'll make it go up and down I'm taking that little pin and that little printed part there and push it into the center axis from either side and that'll allow it to go up and down so here's my eyeball I showed you from the last video it just gets um, glued onto there there's a little little socket that it goes into to stop it moving around and keeps it nice and snug and using a two-part epoxy push it on there so I did that for the left and right So I've just added the eyelids on there. Like I said, it's gonna attach to those arms. There's just a couple of screws that, that fix them on with. So this is piano wire. Cutting a few lengths of this, and making some little hooks essentially that will, one will attach to the servo arm and the other attaches to the gimbal mechanism. So it kind of just hooks into that top part and this is a little easy connector they're called. Just align that rod through it and put it onto the servo head. And same for the left and right. So obviously I need to get these uh, aligned with my um, controller. So you've got a tra transmitter and the receiver here. So I'm just going to uh, get the basic tolerances aligned. So I want this to be pretty central you know, I can do some micro tunes and adjustments in the controller. As long as I get these pretty central for the up and down, left and right, that it should look okay. And there you can see in the back, it seems to be right. It doesn't seem to be intersecting with the eyelids. Got enough tolerance and, and clearance around there, which is really good to see because, like I said last time, those eyeballs were a, a pain. It's only working.
obviously there needs to be a few more adjustments, a bit more tuning, but I'm pretty happy with that little gimbal mechanism. I've never made one before and uh, I certainly even haven't really seen one before. It's just the basic concept I've seen from a couple of people's videos. And here's the teeth that I cast in my last video. So these just get attached to this little mechanism. It's a, um, a servo block is the aluminium part and I've manufactured these little arms that attach to the set of dentures there. And those springs just a bit of tension. The idea being is it pivots left and right and open and closes to sort of give a chewy chewing motion. And there's um, essentially a, a tray that this attaches to. So it allows it to swivel around and, and the eyes and everything else will get attached to this as well so everything comes together. So this is the top set of dentures and this is going to have a little tray sitting inside it that will take a servo which will in theory and hope um, lift the top lip up. The top lip should go up and forward but kind of ran out of space, servos, money, brain capacity. sort of designed them in such a way that you know the, the top dench is a little bit bigger so those teeth get a bit of wobble. Here's the underskull I showed you in my previous video as well. That kind of just it's just all aligned a lot nicer than the uh, fiberglass one I made so it sockets together a bit better all the top all the holes have better tolerances and just a bit happier with it. But yeah it all fits in there pretty well. It's starting to look like something. There's a couple more little little blocks of manufactured. These just basically set off this eye mechanism from the plate that the teeth are attached to, uh, give a bit more space underneath for the servos. And then it gets connected to the plate. And <laughs> yeah. So here's, that, here's the body that I've got and like I said it just attaches with a, with a few screws and, and lock nuts just to keep everything secure. Attaches nicely and everything lines up pretty well. And a quick test here to make sure that the weight isn't too much or nothing moves as intended, that it's working okay. So I've got a little servo in that in that tray in the top teeth, in the, in the top palette, and there's just a bit of wire that's gonna basically lift up the top lip. I'll find some way of attaching that to the skin. But I need the skin first to try that. But some more of that wire. I might need to upgrade to a thicker wire and see how it works with the silicone skin on it. But yeah, got one on the top, one on the bottom. Looks okay. I can increase the speed as well of the servos and uh, on my controller. It's not a bad wee test. We'll just speed up the footage. And these two servos at the back will essentially control the eyebrows. The eyebrows at the minute might change later, but is a kind of a, a push-pull mechanism that will hopefully push the eyebrows forwards and down and, and pull them back and lift them up there so slightly. So you can see where they sit at the back. And I'll attach to some little push rods. And uh, some little push rods mounting the top of the underskull there, the eyebrow pieces that I've made. And that just kind of slots back on and those rods will attach to the uh, servo arms at the back of the mechanisms. It just screws, screws back in place. As you can see here, I just kind of fit those through the easy connectors and tighten them up. And then the two servos pushing forward and backwards, basically lower and raise those rods. So when there's, when there's a skin on here, there'll be some resistance and flex in that wire. So I hope it'll be more of a, an, an up and down rather than a forward and backwards motion. But obviously I need to create the body. So I'm just making some basic patterns. I've never really made a puppet body before. I'm 
just following along to some YouTube videos that I found and just following their steps. So basically create some shapes and some trace that onto the foam. It's like puppet foam. Cut those out and use a contact adhesive a one minute contact adhesive to stick them together so you kind of fold them in the way that they're going to sit. For a first attempt I'm pretty happy because it wasn't really the easiest of body designs. It's kind of got ribs then a sunken in chest and a, and a podgy belly that sticks out and a hunch back and it, I mean it looked more like a jelly bean type shape than anything else so yeah, it was quite a few different patterns and I did one cut of the foam though, which I'm quite happy about because like I said, it's an expensive project to sell some more blood before I ever consider doing one of these again. But yeah, all my pieces seem to fit back pretty well and it's true, you know, it doesn't look like it at the time, but when you um, fit them back the way that your template lays them out, you know, it definitely creates that shape. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. This is all going to get covered in a fur. So obviously these these U joints and aluminium rods need covering as well. So I'm just going to repeat the same processes of cutting out sections of foam and kind of building up slowly to make um, the, the rough shape that the, the fur is going to attach to. It looks like he's sitting down, squatting down on his butt. Knees sticking up in the air, and two arms on crutches. But yeah, yeah. and basically all the all the cables for the servos, just tie them together. Just putting this loom down through the center of the body, it doesn't interfere with anything. It comes out the back, so I can just push all the batteries and receivers out there. And and that um, little block is is the mouth mechanism, the jaw mechanism. I replaced my controller with a little servo bank I knocked up. Control rods. Not interfering with anything, it's working okay. So the arms, I made a little a little mechanism a few videos ago. It was like a little grabby action and uh, here it is here. It's just a spring that basically, you know, a few couple of pivots. And this is the, um, the Big Brother kind of version, just a much stronger, stronger material. But basically the same principle. I've got a bit of fishing wire, this was like fire line, I think it's called. It's going to go through some rods and with the arms kind of grabbing forward to those springs and this thing moving it will just basically like it's trying to grab something off the ground you know it was, or rummaging through something and just little weird arms there's two arms there on the on the rods would be like on walking sticks like on crutches or, you know old wooden sticks and the other two will come forward like he's kind of sifting through the dirt or the garbage or something or whatever this guy's eventually going to be doing so just i've just bent a piece of um, hollow rod around there so it's mechanism so you can kind of you know it takes a bit of puppeteering and getting used to obviously you want a person either side doing that I think it will be a pretty good range of movement you can see there it kind of adds to it these are gonna have silicone skins put on so these are just little you know standoffs really what the silicone will attach to here we are on a Sunday afternoon. I invaded my wife and her friends eat, um, late afternoon lunch to basically ask if they could help me control some mechanisms. So, you know, they've never used a controller before, but I think they did all right. So we're just playing around just to make sure that, you know, we're just to see really. It's the first time I've ever seen everything moving together. Um, obviously I need a monitor in front of me so I can actually see what I'm doing. The movement's certainly there and with a bit of puppeteering and practice, final skin and the fur on, I think it's going to be okay. I'm pretty happy with how this is going. Certainly not bad for a first attempt. And this is the ZBrush design I did. Just <laughs> mucked up a few ideas of what it could look like. You know, so it's a bit of a far away from that in a minute, but you know that's certainly where we're aiming to get. A little door open and close, side to side mechanism. Eyes are working nicely and sort of blink okay. The real test is going to be when the silicone gets on there and how well that's going to flex and move you know, the torque and mechanical stress so we'll see how that goes. For now it's not so bad. I definitely need some extra arms. There's probably another two people who decide moving those 
his rod arms there, but... You know, if I just was just behind concentrating on the body movement, I think it would be okay. So, there he is. So that's more or less where I'm at with it at the minute. Obviously I need to um, still figure out how to puppeteer and, and playing with the mechanism itself and, and the best way to go about moving is. That was just a wee test that me and my partner and a friend of ours did. Uh, but once the fur gets on here, the silicone, we can start to see if we've got enough push on some of these mechanisms. And so really that's the next step is, is get the skin attached, get the fur on, just get this guy finished. So thanks very much again for stopping by and um, I hope to see you next time. Thanks. Bye.